afternoon, second grade families and students. Mr. Sergeant here with your day 10. It's hard to believe it's day 10 already, but day 10 recap video. In ELA today, it was fairly easy. The only thing that students had to do was complete a spelling test that you can find on Kahoot. The link for that test is in the description below. Feel free to take it, and even if you're not part of my class, feel free to check it out and see how well you can do on one of my spelling tests. Our major focus of the day, though, was indeed science. And that's something I want to do for most Fridays. Fridays are a great day to do experiments, do science projects, have scientific discussions, and just ultimately have some fun while learning some science. So what we started with today was why it's important to follow directions when doing an experiment. We listened to a couple examples as well as listed a couple examples and why it's important to follow a step-by-step -step instructions when doing any project. Main reason, because we wanna make sure it's done correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and model that for you today because we did a science project today that included a lot of steps and a lot of directions. So stay tuned and see if you can build a weather station with us. This week, we've been reading a book called Building a Weather Station that you can find on Epic. Uh, this gives a step-by-step -step directions on how to build a weather station and pretty much how to build everything that we're doing today. So the first thing that we're going to need is a box. Now, I have gone ahead and decorated this box to fit our class. And I think it's very, very nice for our weather station. Now, inside you're gonna see some charts and things like that. I will be able to explain that after we start building. The first thing that we're gonna build is a wind or a weather vane. Now, the wind or weather vane is probably the easiest of the weather tools to build. All you're going to need is a square piece of paper, now, in this case, we're using, I'm using a note card, but you can use cardstock, um, cardboard would work, uh, but it needs to be strong enough to kind of catch the wind. All right, you need a ruler, a pencil, a tack, and a straw. So, the first step is to draw a diagonal line on your square. So, we know that this is a vertical line. Now, a vertical line goes straight up and down. A horizontal line goes side to side. But a diagonal line is a little bit different. It goes from corner to corner. So you're gonna wanna draw a diagonal line and then take your scissors and cut it. Now, the cool thing about this is when you cut a square diagonally, you get two brand new shapes, you get two triangles. All right, so we take our triangles and we take our straw and, well, I forgot one of the other bits of the experiment and that is a little bit of tape. And you're going to want to tape your triangles to your straw. Now you're gonna to wanna to put the straw in the center of the triangle and you're gonna want them both triangles pointing in the same direction. So this triangle is pointing in that direction. So I need to make sure that my other triangle is also pointing in that direction. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, like so. Boom. And there you go. We have created an arrow. Now, for right now, it's just an arrow. Nothing can happen from it. So we take our pencil, and our tack. And you put your tack through the center of the arrow, like so. And then you attach it to the center of the eraser of your pencil. And now you have a weather vane. Now what this will do is the wind will take it and steer it in the direction that the wind is going. So. If the wind is blowing from east to west, then it will be pointing this way. But if it changes, it will turn 
and point to the direction of the wind. Pretty cool, isn't it? So we go ahead and we put that on our weather station. That is the first step. Now, as far as the next step, we have thermometers. Now, I have built some thermometers, but it's a little hard to do right now. So if you have a thermometer around the house, feel free to put it in your weather station. I just happen to have Mr. Wizard right here. And we're gonna go ahead and put that right in our weather station. So we now can tell the direction of the wind from our weather vane, as well as the temperature that it's gonna be outside. Our next weather tool is a barometer. Now, if you watched my video yesterday, we talked a little bit about barometer. A barometer measures air pressure or the weight of air. And these are actually pretty easy to build. And what's funny, they really work. So all you'll need for a barometer is a jar. I got a glass jar right here. And you'll need a balloon. You will need another straw as well as some tape. So the first thing we need to do is kind of stretch out this balloon. Well, what's the best way to stretch out a balloon? Well, we blow it up. All right, you wanna blow it up as much as you can without popping it, because what's gonna happen is the air pressure that we're putting inside the balloon is stretching the plastic for the balloon, and we kinda of need it to be stretchy. So then the next part, you let the air out, which is always fun. Then you cut it like so, okay? So this piece, we don't need. It's this piece that we need. So what we're gonna do now is take this and open it up, and it should be nice and stretchy because we blew it up, and you're gonna stretch it over the top of the jar, all right? Now, some people use a rubber band to make sure it's sealed, but these balloons are so good that they probably will stay stuck on there. And what's happening right now is the air pressure that's in here, as well as the air pressure that is surrounding us, is affecting this jar right now. And if you, like I said, if you remember from yesterday's video, air pressure is everywhere. So the next thing that we do, we take our straw, we take our tape. This is actually a really easy part. You take the straw and you just tape it to the top of the balloon. And that's it. There is your barometer. Now, to show that this works, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put it back in this weather station. Now, inside the weather station, I created a chart that goes from high to low. Now, wherever the straw is pointing is gonna be what the air pressure is outside. Now, we're not outside, we're inside, but we can kind of still see where it is going to point. So if you take a look right there, you will see that our barometer, uh-oh, it's pointing towards the low. Now, just seeing that, we can tell what kind of weather we're gonna have. Now, because we're having low air temperature or low air pressure, we know that we're gonna be getting storms soon. And if you've been watching the weather, you know this to be true. But here in our weather station, we can actually predict what the weather's gonna be just by creating our barometer. So our barometer tests the air pressure, our wind vane tests the direction of the wind, and our thermometer measures the temperature. Next, we're talking about now, wind, wind speed. speed can be measured by a tool called an anemometer. Now, I have tried a lot today. If you looked around my room, there are so many failed attempts at this experiment. Is it okay to fail at an experiment? Yes, as long as you change and adapt what you're doing. And that's what I've had to do most of the day. But I wanna thank my second grade class this morning for coming up with some great ideas. Um, we had a student named Chase that was giving me some incredible ideas. So thank you, Chase. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody that gave me some incredible ideas on how to change the experiment. So 
What we're going to do now is a step-by-step -step process of how to make an anemometer, thanks to my class. So with this part, you don't really need to see me. You just watch what my hands are doing. So we have two straws and we want to connect them in the shape of a plus sign. Now, thanks to Chase and other students that came up with the idea, we are going to use tape to connect these. Now, we have tried everything from tacks to staples to paper clips to everything. But one thing that we found was tape, especially duct tape, works the best. Now, some students came up with the idea of using glue. We could definitely use glue, but because of time and waiting for glue to dry, it may not be time efficient. So we find our center, we place it down, and then we flip it over. And with the other piece of duct tape, make sure that's centered, we put the other tape on the side, we press it in, and guys, we have created a plus side. Now we use this to help as a base for our anemometer. For the next part, I have used everything that I could imagine from plastic cups to bigger cups to smaller cups, and they didn't work. The best thing that I have found that has worked are these small styrofoam bowls. So what we're going to do is we are going to poke a small hole on one side of the bowl and we're going to slide our straw in. Okay, and we're gonna do that for all four sides. Now, it's important when you put these in that they're all facing the same direction. And you'll see in a minute exactly what I mean by that. Um, so we're putting them all facing this way. So I got one more to do. Boom. And there we go. Now, sometimes they go in easy, sometimes they do not. And you just have to be patient with whatever experiment you are doing. All right, so my bowls are now in. And if you notice, they're all facing the same direction. This is important because what an anemometer does is it captures air. The faster the wind speed, and the faster the air is moving, the faster this is going to spin. But it needs these cups to catch the air and to give it enough power to actually spin. So our next step is to attach it to something. So to attach it to this pencil, one thing that I'm going to use is this needle. Now I've used tacks, I've used other things. The needle seems to work the best. So what I do is find my center and I poke this needle through and then I'm able to attach it to the top of the pencil. Now be careful not to poke yourself. I have done that a lot today and I do not recommend it. So once it's attached, you now you can already see it's starting to spin. So now that our anemometer is attached, you'll notice that when we add air to it, it begins to spin. Now I want you to imagine this out in a storm or out in a, when it's on a windy day, it's going to spin really, really fast. On a day like right now, where there's not much breeze, it's not going to spin that fast. But on days where it is really, really windy out there, it is going to spin. So our next step is to attach everything. So we have our box. Already we have our barometer. We have our weather vane. We have our thermometer. And now we have our anemometer. Feel free to build this with your family this weekend if you would like. Um, it's a fun activity that will definitely help us predict what weather is coming. I hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, and until the next time I see you, have a great day.